Uh, this is uh, Jerry Barrett talking. Uh, today's date is May 6th, 1986. I've just uh, concluded a, uh, an, hour and, uh, an hour and a half meeting with um, Jelmer Johnson, who is the head of uh, research function for uh, ALPA. I met him in his office uh, in Herndon, Virginia. Um, I didn't attempt to uh, record a conversation with him because it was more in the nature of uh, background uh, on ALPA and its functioning uh, rather than uh, specifically on Eastern. Uh, but it was, it was useful information to uh, help me to uh, understand uh, what has happened at Eastern. Uh, Johnson has a fairly large staff. Uh, the majority of whom are uh, economists. Uh, he refers to them as analysts. Uh, that's really to describe what they do. They uh, analyze um, economic data related to uh, pilot labor agreements and uh, the condition of the industry, uh, trends in the industry, and the condition of uh, various um, carriers in the industry. Uh, for instance, they did a considerable amount of analysis uh, of the Eastern situation uh, in terms of its, uh, its financial standing. Uh, one of their, uh, one of his staff members uh, went to uh, Eastern Airlines in the, uh, in the fall of uh, 1983 uh, to help with the uh, analysis that was done uh, by the two outside consulting firms uh, brought in by the, uh, the unions uh, to look at Eastern's books. And although the, uh, the ALPA analysts didn't uh, actually participate in the, in the writing of the report done by the consulting firm, they sat in on uh, the sessions in which uh, data was collected and uh, data was looked at uh, basically in the, in, the, in the books at Eastern. Uh, they've also looked into questions like the, the charge that uh, Eastern is uh, badly managed, uh, particularly with respect to uh, its, its financial management. And uh, uh, for, for example, they've reached the conclusion that uh, uh, it was foolish, it was a, it was a, it was a manager, management mistake to have um, uh, accumulated such a large amount of debt that it would have been, uh, that this is the least desirable way of raising revenue and and in making a decision to raise revenue in that way, uh, the profit margins were insufficient in the airlines in the best of uh, circumstances to pay off such a large amount of interest and therefore uh, their, their conclusion was that Eastern should have expanded less rapidly and uh, or it should have uh, and or it should have raised money in the equity market rather than uh, through uh, increasing its uh, already high debt. And this is looking at the thing, as he said, in the most sympathetic manner. That is to say, he felt that uh, Eastern was admittedly in a weakened position at the time that it began its expansion and it did need to do something. But the way in which it went about it uh, was not as prudent as it might have been. Uh, in fact, he put it in, uh, in stronger terms than that. It was a, uh, a very serious mistake. Uh, the other uh, analysis that they did that uh, shows a, uh, a mistake on the part of uh, Eastern was the, uh, the purchase of aircraft, uh, particularly the um, the 757. Uh, uh, he said there that the, um, uh, the, the that represented a series of mistakes as far as uh, they were concerned. Uh, that uh, they basically took the uh, 727 uh, with the idea that they would they would expand it uh, so it would hold more passengers. Then once they did that. 
uh, it was necessary to uh, uh, put bigger engines on it and uh, the larger engines, engines had to go under uh, under the wings rather than on, on the tail section. And so uh, what they what they really did is create a plane that only held uh, 40 more people, but it was considerably larger. And uh, and in many of their routes, uh, the traffic only would would only justify. Uh, something of a smaller aircraft, a 727 or smaller, and here they were flying uh, this huge air, this huge aircraft, and that uh, sort of the proof of uh, the uh, lack of utility of this particular aircraft is that uh, uh, Boeing has had a uh, hell of a time selling it to anybody else. So it's as if they built a thing, built basically a lemon specifically for uh, Eastern Airlines at the request, the urging of uh, Eastern. Uh, the research tools available at ALPA are rather impressive. Uh, they have a, a number of databases that they can uh, access uh, quite easily. One specifically on the airline industry, another one uh, uh, that's a, a Nexus, Lexus type, which uh, analyzes some of uh, the, the text in uh, 400 uh, different publications and uh, makes it possible there to uh, find everything that's been written on some specific individual at Eastern Airlines, for example. Uh, they've also got a, uh, their own uh, internal uh, uh, computer system uh, with uh, keyboards and screens all over the office. Uh, and on there, they have a number of, of economic and analyst models. Uh, one of them specifically related to the uh, to pilots' agreements, and uh, he showed called that one up on the screen for me and showed me the capability it had to uh, to analyze uh, any possible change that was made uh, in the airline pilot in an airline pilot's uh, uh, labor agreement, uh, changes in vacation, changes in uh, any other benefits, uh, changes in scheduling, and changes in in hard time, uh, and uh, in which he could run various uh, scenarios to uh, demonstrate the impact of, of, of any one of a number of proposals that might be put forward either by uh, the airline or by uh, uh, the, the pilots. Uh, to, a, to a large extent, they, uh, they operate a research function on the basis of uh, specific airline experts. That is to say, he has a staff person assigned to Eastern, another for United, uh, etc. But then they also break down somewhat al along subject matter uh, lines. Uh, he has uh, one person who's uh, one or two people, I should say, that are expert in ESOPs. Uh, he has one person that's expert in uh, multi-tiered pay systems. Uh, Johnson told me that uh, although he was not at the airline or with ALPA at the time that uh, deregulation took place, he's only been with them uh, for about five years, uh, he said that the number of staff people who were, who were in the uh, regulated period were still on the staff when he arrived. He talked with them a lot. Uh, he said that uh, was much like the rest of the industry, uh, the function had to change with deregulation, the function of the, the research office. And he said that uh, it would be accurate to characterize kind of a slow moving uh, organization at that time, the, the research function was. And now it has to uh, have a lot more data, have a lot more uh, uh, competent people, it has to respond much more quickly to. Uh, changes in demands placed on them by the pilots. He said it varies a great deal from one uh, airline to the other, the kind of demand that's uh, placed on his office for data. He said, for, for example, that uh, Eastern and, uh, and Delta do not request as much information as some other airlines. Uh, 
for, for reasons that they that they do not use as much data. Uh, on the other hand, uh, United, which has a tremendously large number of pilots, uh, it can draw on its own pilots with their wide variety of ex expertise to do a good bit of their uh, research and analysis, and therefore United uh, doesn't place uh, great demands on the research function at Alpha, but they do do they do use a great deal of, uh, of research. Uh, the way Alpha functions with respect to uh, negotiations uh, is, is of interest. For example, uh, Johnson actually reports to. Uh, to Jack, and uh, whose name I, last name I can't say, and uh, uh, Brady is his last name, and to, uh, to Seth Rosen, because they're the head, they really head the negotiation labor relations function. Uh, the uh, general counsel's office at Alpha is not really drawn into negotiations very, very frequently. Uh, the other functions that are involved in negotiations is uh, the research function that uh, Johnson heads up, but also there's a, uh, a, be a benefits and retirement function located in Reston, which gets involved uh, a good deal in negotiations uh, in analysis of that, that particular aspect of the contract and in uh, and actually uh, appearing in negotiations to make presentations and uh, and to uh, make presentations and arguments and to do analysis actually on site where where negotiations are uh, are taking place. Uh, the analysts from uh, Johnson's office do. Uh, go to the site of negotiations uh, from time to time and sometimes do actually sit in on negotiations but uh, he prefers not to have them do that because uh, he feels that uh, uh, it can really compromise the position of the, uh, the eastern negotiators uh, because the uh, airline uh, negotiator will say well certainly your analyst here uh, realizes that what we're saying is true and uh, that would uh, that bringing in of uh, their expertise uh, would not be uh, helpful to the function of the, the pilots and so what they do generally at negotiation sites is meet and caucus with the uh, with the pilots and uh, and their negotiating team I asked Johnson if he sees his uh, function as a uh, pure researcher who uh, seeks to ascertain the truth, uh, or does he uh, get into uh, sort of strategic planning of negotiations? And, uh, and he said that uh, he, he believes that their their function is uh, to uh, get at the facts discover what they are uh, in, a, in the most objective way possible, and then present that data and information to the, uh, to the pilots with suggestions as to uh, what, which part of the data uh, provides the best argument for the pilots in their negotiations uh, without hiding from them any of the, uh, the the data that uh, would be negative for the pilots. Uh, he doesn't feel that there's anything uh, negative in that role, that uh, or, or, or dishonest in that role. Uh, one other person that's involved in the negotiation process is uh, what they call the uh, contract administrators. Uh, for instance, at Eastern, there's a contract administrator uh, who represents ALPA. Uh, in Miami. His name is John Loomis. He's somebody that I've been uh, told to interview. And uh, he is kind of the day-to-day uh, the -day 
handler of Alpha relations with the Eastern Airlines. And uh, he functions with the uh, chairman of the MEC at Eastern. And either of them, uh, or in fact anyone on the negotiation committee, can request uh, information, uh, research, and analysis uh, by Johnson's function. And uh, Johnson encourages those requests to go uh, directly to his uh, staff person who handles it. But uh, frequently, they, uh, they prefer to talk directly with Johnson uh, to make sure that their job gets done thoroughly and gets uh, proper attention, etc. Uh, I asked Johnson what he thought the, uh, the impact of the uh, PATCO strike and the replacement of the uh, air traffic controllers was on the industry. And he said that he, he thought that it did have some uh, initial uh, negative impact on the uh, new entrance into the airline business. Uh, that was primarily because uh, the heavy, uh, heavy uh, uh, traffic and the, uh, the lack of available uh, berthing positions uh, at many of the airports. Uh, but he said it was also uh, very detrimental to the major carriers, too, because it, uh, they already had the slots, they had the aircraft, and uh, they were slowed down considerably in terms of uh, uh, the amount of revenue that they were getting during that period.